Tender Blunders. So, um, it's week 53, and we have a free week, and I don't really know what to talk about, so I'm going to talk about something that's been on my mind lately. I've been having family drama, and I've been having, um, just drama around my transition in general, um, which blows because I'm really close to getting hormones and that would be really nice. It's made me think about why I want to transition and I mean yeah there's the whole like you know my body doesn't feel right thing um but that's not entirely it for me and you're not going to know how this links up until later so deal so so bear with me um I promise I'm getting somewhere. When I was little um, before I was even born, actually, um, when my dad first met my mom and my mom's friends, um, he told them that he was an alien from Venus. And I know that's weird because Venus is usually the, the planet we associate with women, but that's always what he's claimed, and it, he was really convincing at it. When he first told my mom this, um, she would tell me stories later about how they would take pictures, like group pictures, and he would never show up in them because, like, the smoke from the fire would be just right, or someone cut him off. He could, um, you know, anytime my mom and I were hurt, like, anytime I got a skin knee, um, he could just touch that area and it would go away. Um, which is kind of like the mom kissing it better thing, but it was, it was different than that. Um, because I, I legitimately believed he had powers and um, he has a really loose scalp so like he can wiggle his eyebrows and make his hair move um, which we always attributed to like this not being his real form or whatever and for a long time I believed him I believed him till I was like hitting my teens so there's that part I had a very long torrid relationship with David Bowie's music and David Bowie um, and mostly I had a long torrid love affair with his character Ziggy Stardust. Um, and for those of you that don't know, which is really weird, um, <laughs> cause I feel like every queer should know about David Bowie. Um, Ziggy Stardust was David Bowie's character, um, in the 70s, um, where he was a guitarist from Mars, so he was an alien. The, the circular gold ring on his head, and he had the bright red hair, mullet thing. The thing is, is that people pretty much would have believed him because he is so otherworldly looking. And part of that is because of his eyes, but I think a lot of it is because of how androgynous he was during the time. And so, from an early age, I always kind of linked androgyny with this concept of being an alien. I've always kind of felt like an alien. I don't really relate to my peers. Um, I don't really relate well to anyone. And when I do, it's very, very limited. Not for lack of trying. Um, I mean, I can, I can sympathize and I can empathize on some levels, but like, I don't really feel like I have a, a super strong bond with many people. Um, in terms of relatability. I think another part of it is um, I kind of feel like my transition is in some part like body modification. Like I'm trying to make my body represent me more. Cause I don't really like the whole making my inside making my outside match my inside thing because I don't really have a gender inside. I've never really thought of myself in, ge in gender terms like that. Um, I mean, I've never really thought of my insides as androgynous either, though. So, I mean, like, there's something otherworldly inside of me. Blah. I feel like my body isn't matching my insides so much as representing an idea. My insides are voting, and this is the kind of body that we voted for. <laughs> I feel like the same way I feel about getting tattoos and piercings and dyeing my hair and that kind of thing, it's all about self-expression. And I feel that mod like going through transition and modifying my body in that way 
is just an extension of that. Um, I mean, yeah, there's a big part of it that's like, I would like to be taken more seriously as a male, um, but my body's never really going to be male, and I don't ever really want it to be. If I could go out and buy a body that was like all male and like what I wanted, I would do it in a heartbeat, but like, I'm never going to have a cock. Like, I don't really want phalloplasty, like, the science isn't really there for me. I guess my body, like, changing my body in this way is, is kind of making a statement, but it's not really making, like, a, a statement, like, making a statement. I kind of feel like it's the same way I make a statement when I wear a witty t-shirt. Like, not making signs, and not yelling at people, I'm not with a bunch of other people that are making the same statement. I'm just kind of there, and you could read my shirt, and you could get it, or you could read my shirt, and you could not get it, or you could not read my shirt, and that's kind of how I feel about my gender. I mean, it's there. You can acknowledge it and get it. You can acknowledge it and not get it, or you can just ignore me, which is completely within reason. So that's kind of how I feel about it, and I, I think a lot of people would get upset at me for saying that because it's really, it, it seems minimizing. I'm not trying to minimize it for other people because it's important and I recognize that it's important for other people and that transition is a really big deal for them. It's a really big deal for me too, don't get me wrong, I really want it. I mean it's important and it's a big deal and I, I want to get that across. And it's not political and it's only kind of personal. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. I just want a queer body. There's like no, like I mean there's reasons for it, but no one real reason. I think I feel better with a queer body. I think that's the kind of person I am the kind of person that would have a queer body. I don't know, it just feels right. It just feels like this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Well, I've rambled a fair bit and I think I'm gonna have to cut it down a lot to make it into a proper video. So I'm gonna stop and edit it and upload it and um, I hope you kids are having a good day and I hope you're surviving the snowocalypse. Let me, let me check outside the window here. And we, we're still going. Um, so I hope you guys survive and are keeping warm and hopefully have someone to snuggle up to if you're into snuggling. Um, but, um, sorry about being so scatterbrained and not really saying a whole lot. Um, just kind of working through some of this stuff. So, um, I guess I will talk to you next week when we have a proper topic. movie.